Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord is good. All the time. And all the time. The Lord, the Lord is good. We are so grateful to the Almighty God. Yes, Lord. For tonight, mm. the Lord has dealt well with us. Throughout this season, we have seen the sustaining hand of the Lord. Uh, yesterday, the Lord visited us in a very powerful way, both in the morning session and also in the evening session. Yes. And we are believing God that just like He visited us this morning, He will visit us this evening too. Yes. Amen. Amen. God bless you if you are watching us. Or, you know, watching us from Facebook. YouTube, those on our Zoom line, and then also the free conference line. God bless you all. All across Germany and all over the world, wherever you are watching from this Church of Pentecost meeting district in Germany. And we bring to you the word of God right now. Amen. Amen. We are speaking on the team given to us by the International Executive of our church. God heal our land. Mm. And uh, in our morning sessions yesterday, uh, that party minister powerful. And then this morning to Ed uh, Richmond, also minister powerful. And the church had time to pray unto our God. It suggests to me that uh, the church is not bound. Mm -hmm. Even though we are told we are still having that encounter with Jesus. Mm. And Jesus will triumph. Yes. We believe the enemy is already defeated. Yes. And God is going to heal us too. Yes. He will heal us and heal our land. Yes. If somebody believe what I'm saying, will you shout amen? Amen. amen. I want us to pick our scripture reading tonight from one of the Gospels. John Gospel. John chapter 9. And for those of you who have been following us very well, I, I, I gave an introduction of the scripture uh, we've been preaching on in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. Uh, tomorrow I'll be ministering fully on that scripture. Tonight we want to look at another thing. John chapter 9, verse 1 to 12. John chapter 9, verse 9 to 12. Now, as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sent this man or his parents that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sent, but the works of God should be revealed. I must work the work of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. When he said these things, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said to him, Go, watch in the pool of Siloam, which is translated sent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. Therefore, the neighbors and those who previously had seen that he was blind said, Is not this he who sat and bed? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. He said, I am he. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Therefore they said to him, 
How were your eyes open? He answered and said, A man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and I received my sight. Then they said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. Amen. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There is a song from my heart I would like to sing. Yeah. Jesus, oh Jesus, how I trust you, how I proved you all and all. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh for to trust you more. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust you, I proved you all and all. Jesus, Jesus, pray. It is 
a question for thought. Because the Bible says in the book of Job, God was present. In fact, at a celestial gathering, God spotted that Satan was in the midst of his angels. And the Bible said that it was God himself who said, Satan And then Satan said, yes, but it is because you have built a hedge around him. And then he solicited for permission. This is where the problem is. That if you want, allow me to touch him a little while and see if he will not catch you. And God, who is just, God, who is good, God, who is omnipotent, omnibenevolent, God, who knows all things. Permitted that a servant who is faithful and serving right will be attacked by the enemy. The question is where is the justice and fairness of this God who allows Satan to touch the wealth, the children, the properties, and even infested him with an incurable disease? The Bible said that in a single day, the man who is approved by God. And the angels in heaven was attacked. And in a single day, he lost his children. He lost his real estate. He lost virtually everything that he has. But thank God, the Bible said that John said, it was God who gave it to me. He has taken it back. May his name alone be praised. May his name alone be praised. It did not end there. The Bible says that the enemy went back again to God and demanded that if you want, let me touch his body with a disease. Maybe in our days we call it coronavirus. Maybe HIV. Maybe cancer. And the Bible said that from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, Job was infested with sores and incurable disease said that when his friends decided to come and visit him, they could not recognize that this was their friend Job. I love it the way the scripture puts it in Job chapter 19. Job says, Even my wife, the one whom I sleep with, now it seems like my breath has become foreign to her. My own maid servant, whom I call, and she ran with haste. Now when they hear of my name, they run away. Friends have neglected me. I am afflicted with pain. Yet, when I ask God a question, he will not answer me. And if I could see the God who had permitted me to go through this pain and affliction and disease and trouble and pain, I could even ask him a question. But here I ask, and he does not answer. And see how diseases and pain have impeded me. Oh, Job went through pain. He went through torture. The question is, is God good? It's good. Is God omnipotent? Is God omnipotent? Does God know all things? And if he's so good, why would he permit that the servant who he has justified about will go through such pain and torture. It interests me a lot in the Bible. When I read the book of John and I come to the chapter 5 and I see a person who the Bible says has some sort of a disease, some paralysis. The Bible was not specific about the condition of the man, but he says that he found himself in a pool in Jerusalem by the Bethesda. He went there with an anticipation that he might receive his healing because Bethesda means the house of grace. And in those days, according to scripture, at a particular time, an angel of the Lord will come and stir up the waters. Mm -hmm. The whosoever dip himself inside first will be cured 
cured of every disease. But this man has been there for 38 good years. 38 good years without cure. And everybody who comes will just bypass me and receive his healing. Christianity sometimes is very painful. And sometimes you cannot phantom some of these things. Why I came to church with that brother the same day with an anticipation of something. He has received his miracle for 48, 38 good years. I'm so suffering without an answer. It is common with women who come to church believing that after some few months or years, God will do a miracle in their life. But like the situation of this man, 38 good years, there is no miracle. But you see, we serve a faithful God. Oh, yes. We serve a mighty God. Uh -huh. Scripture gives hope and encouragement to believers in the midst of such or mm. and predicaments of life. Mm. Because I know in the midst of trouble, where we cannot understand God, mm. God is behind the scenes, mm -hmm. working things for our good. Yes. And so the Bible says, Arise and shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Oh, yes. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth. Coronavirus will cover the earth. There will be weeping and gnashing. People will be troubled. And we will not know what to do. The world will come to a standstill. But the Lord will arise over you. And His glory will be seen upon you. Yes. And the Gentiles will come to your light. Yes. And the keys to the brightness yes. of your rising. I am here to announce to somebody tonight, even though we are faced with Corona, we are going through darkness, we are going through a period where we cannot see light, but get ready. God is about to do a great thing. God is about to shine. After this, the glory of the Lord upon the church and upon your life will be so great and so powerful. Men will not understand because we serve the true God. Oh, yes. oh somebody shout a big amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In this text, the Bible says Jesus was passing by. And then as he passed by, he saw a blind man. He was blind from birth. And then his disciples inquired from him, Master, who said, is it the young man or his parents? Because blindness at the time in the Old Testament was indicative of sin. They believed that if someone was blind, then it means the blindness is as a result of the sins of that person. But here is someone who has been born with blindness. Does it mean that he said, whilst he was in the mother's womb, if children cannot say, then was it his parents who said? But listen to the answer of Jesus. He said, it is not the man who has said. It is not his parents who have said. But he is blind because he has to be blind so that the works of God, the glory of God, the power of God, the goodness of God, the greatness of God, the anointing of God will come upon him and heal him of his wounds and heal him of his sickness, heal him of his infirmity. The men will know this is not of men, this is not of any individual. But we serve the mighty God, we serve the King of Glory, we serve an omnipotent God. I said, God is good. Yes. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. After this season, <laughs> after this season, men will see the church of God oh, yes. coming up with strength, coming up with power, coming up with anointing, yes, coming up with grace, yes. coming with the goodness of the Lord. Oh, yes. If somebody is there, yes. would you shout at me, them? I see your miracle coming. I see your goodness coming. Amen. I see your breakthrough coming. Amen. I see the words working in your life. Receive your miracle in the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Do you know that darkness, blindness, is as a result?
result of sin. And it brings bondage and slavery. When someone is caught up in the web of sin, it means that that person is born. You are under the servitude of sin. Your movement is restricted. Oh, let me give this testimony before I continue. And anytime I share messages related to blindness, I see the opportunity to give this testimony. During my secondary school days, I was privileged to be voted the school prefect of my school during my final years. And one day I was in my cubicle, and I went one of our students, because we had a blind resource center in our school. And that one blind student knocked at my door. And then when he came, he said, ask me, somebody has done something against me, I must report to you. The person needs to be punished. And he sat before me, and as he was narrating the story, I saw a blind man with his eyes open, like your, your eyes and my eyes, weeping with tears flowing down his cheeks. But yet, he could not see me. And he even asked, where are you? That's to so that I can touch you. You see, when you are blind, when you are blind, you are limited. You are restricted. You cannot move. It is only blind people that someone will lead them. When you are blind, there are people who can tell you go to the right. Meanwhile, he knows there is a hole, there is a pit, and he is driving you to your right so that you fall into the pit because you are blind. Blindness places a limitation on you. Your movement is restricted. When you are blind, it means your optical vision is blocked. Even though he was seeing me, with his eyes open, yet he could not perceive anything. He did not even know that I was sitting in front of him. Oh, 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 oh. What sin can do to man? No wonder the Bible says, the wages of sin is death. And the Bible said that all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of the Lord. God will punish the sin to the third and the fourth generation. The Bible said that you shall not bow to them nor serve them. For I am the Lord your God. I am a jealous God. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and the fourth generation of those who hate me. So don't sin. Don't be caught in darkness. Don't find yourself under the entanglement of darkness and sin. Because sin will place a limitation on you. It will restrict your vision. It will limit you and restrict you and you cannot move. That is sin for you. That is sin. In the situation of this man, he was suffering because of his blindness. Listen, when we, we go through suffering, sometimes it's good. Because it refers to anything that will cause pain and distress and calamity in the life of the believer. From biblical point of view, affliction begins with the entrance of sin into the world. Both mankind and all creation were afflicted with tongues and testers. Sin, death, and decay. So wherever there is sin, wherever there is suffering, it is believed that it has a result of the sin that has given way and paving the way for suffering. The Bible said that when the first man sinned, they were afflicted with tongues and testers. Sin set in. Death set in. There was a total decay in every sphere of life. Due to sin, misery is common in human experience. And Job says, our short life is full of trouble, as expressed by him. Because of sin, because of darkness, life has become difficult for man. And we grow in darkness. We grow in trouble. We grow in pain. I have no doubt that what we are experiencing in this world as a form of coronavirus might be a result of some of these things. Because it seems like sin is at upheaval. 
is on the ascendancy and is getting out of hand. It is impossible for human beings to avoid natural calamity, physical injury, and interpersonal conflict. Yet God uses affliction to instruct and discipline his people. The Bible says that this aspect of affliction is graphically portrayed by the oppressor during the Israelite sojourn in Egypt. So you see that in the life of Egypt, in the life of Israel, any time they sin, God will bring God will bring judgment upon them, and calamity and trouble will come upon their life. Think of it when they sin and insulted Moses. The Bible said that God sent snakes to bite them and to kill the people in the desert. But if my people <laughs> who are called by my name will humble themselves and turn away from their wicked ways and pray unto the Lord, I the Lord who hear their prayer and come and heal their land. And so the Bible said that when God got ready to heal his land, he said to Moses, make a bronze serpent and hang it on the pole. And whosoever is bitten by the real snake, let the person lift his eyes unto the bronze serpent and that person shall be saved. The Bible said at the day, anyone who was bitten by a snake was saved. It tells you that in the cross, where Jesus is lifted up, anyone who lift his eyes unto Jesus shall be saved. Well, yes. For Christ says, as the brass serpent was lifted in the Old Testament in the desert, so shall the Son of Man be lifted up. That whosoever believe in him will receive life. I don't know who I'm preaching out to. I don't know what your situation has become. I don't know where you are. But I preach to you the word of God. That the time has come. That the world must lift up our heads and look to the altar and the finisher of our faith. Oh, yes. Then we said, I will lift up my heads unto the hill. Where come my help? My help comes from the Lord. Oh, yes. The creator of the heavens and the earth. The Lord who does not sleep or slumber, he will take charge over you. Oh, somebody shout, Amen. Amen. When we are suffering or we go through sin, God will send suffering and pain in our lives. And we see trouble during the period of the judges. Do you remember when God will send punishment upon the children of Israel and he will raise men like Ehud, like Barak, like Deborah, like Samson, like Gideon. God brought these judges that they will vindicate their people from the hands of the enemy. When the people sin, he will punish them by sending them into exile in Babylon under the cruelty of Nebuchadnezzar so that they will serve with pain and with rigor. However, when Israel cried to the Lord, he will always deliver them and lead them to obedience. And that is why this text is very important. That if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their life. The Bible said, Come and let us return to the Lord. For he has come, but he will heal us. He has stricken, but he will bind us up. Beloved, I am here to tell you many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord shall deliver them from them all. If you are an enemy, you do not have to rejoice over me. Because when I fall down, the Lord will lift me up. Oh, this is just a test. We are going through a period, and the Lord is preparing us through this process. That when we come up, we shall be strong, Amen. we shall be sharp, Amen. we shall be refined. In the name of the Lord, Amen. somebody receive your life. Receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, praise Amen. the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. There are some practical lessons you need to know. When we go through suffering, we are humble and we receive sufficient grace. The other day, the apostle among apostles, Paul, the apostle, through Apostle Paul, we have almost half of the New Testament epistles. A man who received revelation from the Lord, he was anointed in the power of the Holy Ghost. But the Bible says, Paul, disease of a kind. I don't know the type of a disease it was. And Paul said, I will pray to the Lord. Lord, heal me. Lord, give me breakthrough. Lord, I need my deliverance. But the more the apostle prayed, oh, instead of an answer, the Lord will send a messenger of Satan to torment him. 
is sufficient unto you. Can I suggest to somebody? We are going to pay. We are going to touch. Uh -huh. We are locked up in our rooms. Uh -huh. But the grace of God oh, yes. is upon our lives. Amen. His grace is sufficient. Amen. That has to fight and oh, yes. You uh, should strike the battle of Christ in the name of Jesus. Amen. May you receive the grace of God. May you receive the grace of God. May you receive the grace of God. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Pain, affliction, and trouble would teach the believer to endure and become disciplined. So the Bible says that when we are chastised, it is not because God wants to punish us. No. But it's because the Lord loves us. Yes. When you go through suffering, mm -hmm. it builds an unflinching faith mm -hmm. and tenacity. Mm -hmm. Have you read it in the book of Acts? The Bible says that they were they were arrested, Peter and John, and were beaten with rods. But after they were released, they went back into the city center uh -huh. and began to proclaim the name of the Lord. <laughs> hey, oh, God praise the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus said that all those who will follow him will follow him with trust uh -huh. and with souls. So pain, affliction, mm -hmm. diseases, mm -hmm. coronavirus, what we are going through uh -huh. is part of the things uh -huh. that a believer will go through. Mm -hmm. I love it. He says we will go through. It means even though it will come, we have a protective arm of the Lord oh, yes. that we will surely go through. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, we shall come clean. Shall we shall come with fire. Oh, yes. Because the hand of the Lord is upon the children of God. Oh, yeah. Somebody shout a bit. Amen. So my Bible said that Jesus mm -hmm. looked at the condition of the man and he said, I will perform a miracle. A miracle that will blow the minds of the people. A miracle that will let the people know that I am I am the source of all creation. Oh, yes. I possess power in my heart. And I have the power to do what I want. It doesn't really matter he was born black. Whether you think he said or his father said, I am the Lord. And I will effect miracles. Somebody shout amen. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And so the Bible says. Jesus took man and then he spit up into it <laughs> and then mixed the mark with saliva mm. and then he plastered his eyes. Oh, this is quite degrading. Mm. The person is blind and if you want to heal him or give him an eyesight, why do you mix saliva in a contemporary times? Even in those days, when somebody spit on you, it is humiliating. Mm -hmm. It means the person has run you down, relegated you. Mm -hmm. he, he has demeaned you. He thinks you are a nobody. Mm -hmm. He spattered into a mark and then plastered his eyes. The person is already blind. <laughs> and then you have plastered his eyes with mark. How can he move? How can he go forward? But listen, you see, miracles are supernatural happenings that defy natural laws or a phenomenon that is not really explainable by reflex law mm -hmm. that scientists do not yet fully understand. Uh -huh. And so God is going to do something in this period. Amen. He's going to do something in your very life. Amen. It will blow the minds of people. Amen. They will wonder, Amen. what is this? Amen. What is the meaning of this? Amen. But you see, what people think is an impossibility. I am a I am a Of life 
their brother and soul into that life. God, he gave mouth to mouth resuscitation. A man became a living nephew. And so I believe that the man has lost his heart. But Jesus, in the realms of the spirit, was creating a new thing for the man to see. You see, the thing, it is not there. But I serve a God who can create what is not there. I don't know what you are lacking. If you have got to do with children, if I've got to do with husband, if I've got to do with mother, if I've got to do with disease, if I've got to do with infirmity, I serve a mighty God. The Lord who created it in the name of Jesus. Your miracle is coming. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible says all things were created by Him, mm. and He gave His life. Yes. The light of all men mm. into the world. He is the light of the world. Oh, yes. Ha. Ha, when ha, Jesus ha, ha, come ha, ha, ha. into a place, Man, if there is darkness, disappear. darkness disappear. will disappear. Oh, yes. yes. And so the Bible said, in the beginning was the word. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Preacher, sir. In the beginning was the word. Yes, sir. And the word was God. Oh, yes. And the word was with God. Uh -huh. I am so oh.
that the Lord caught Philip and joined him to his chariot. Mm -hmm. And Philip asked, Do you understand what you are reading? Mm -hmm. The Bible said, The Ethiopian Enoch said, I have no understanding unless somebody teaches me. Today I have come to extrapolate the word of God. That it might not be a physical blindness, mm -hmm. but you are blind in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Because the God of this age has blindfolded us. That seeing we might not see, least the light of the gospel will shine upon us. Receive Jesus into your life. And your life will be different. You shall pass from death unto life. Your name shall be written in the Lamb Book of Life. Because we serve a God who is capable. He has the power. He has paid a painful price. But die on the cross. And his blood is so powerful and so efficacious that he's able to save us. Even though your sins may be red as a scarlet, it shall come back as a snow. This evening, may the Lord bless you. Amen. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. Amen. Amen. I pray that the sinner will come to the Lord. Amen. The Lord will wash all away your sins. Amen. The Lord will give you a new tent. Amen. Only one tent is required. Mm. If you are ready to accept the good news mm. and give your life to Jesus. That is all why the Lord has sent us this evening mm. on your way. Whether by internet, whether by Zoom, or by free conference call. The Lord wants you saved. He wants to open your eyes. And give you a new life. Mm. If you want to accept Jesus before we enter into a time of prayer, I want to see the opportunity to give you an invitation to make the Lord. Your God and your Lord. If you are that person, may you raise your hands wherever you are and pray this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus. I am a sinner. I am a sinner. I have heard your word tonight. I have heard your word tonight. And I believe. It is because of me. It is because of me that you came to die. That you came to die. Thank you. Thank you for saving me. For saving me. I invite you to be the Lord. I invite you to be the Lord over my life. Over my life. Write my name. Write my name in the Lamb Book of Life. I thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If you pray that prayer, I believe you are saved. Yes. And the Lord will write your name mm. in the number of life. You are now a new creation. Mm. In Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. amen.